Hey gorgeous, welcome to my channel Soil and Margaritas. My name is Roxana and I garden in zone, zone six now in central Indiana. And today I'm going to do a video of a recap of everything. Well, most of the things that I did in my garden in 2023. So maybe it can inspire, or if you're new here, it can give you an idea of the things that I do in my small garden. My garden is not even half of an acre. It's not even a quarter of an acre. It's a very, very small lot close to the city where houses are like literally next to each other. So I try to maximize the space to grow vegetables, flowers, and I use in-ground flower beds, I use raised beds, I use containers, and I try to document everything that I do in this channel. So if you're new here, you're going to find that I do a lot of things. I experiment with a lot. I have a lot of success, but I also have a lot of failures, just like everything else. Let me start with microgreens. At the beginning of the year, right about this time, getting close to the beginning of the year, I started playing with the idea of growing things indoors to use in my kitchen. And I wasn't necessarily talking about just growing herbs, having a small uh, area where I was growing herbs, but I was looking into growing microgreens. And it was a lot of fun, you guys. I show you in a few videos that I started growing some things like sunflowers, sweet peas, broccoli, all kinds of goodies. I did a few videos of that and it was a lot of fun. Have you tried microgreens before? If you haven't tried microgreens and you want something to harvest really quick, I think that you should give them a try because some of those, some of those seeds were ready to harvest between seven and 10 days, like really, really quick. The one that I'm also going to keep on trying here, and I don't necessarily think that I'm going to do videos about it, is cilantro because even though it takes a little bit longer, I, I believe that it took me about 21 days to grow cilantro from literally planting the seed in the containers to actually harvesting. It was about 21 days. And I mean, for having that turnaround, it's really, really great. And especially nowadays in the winter where you can't really find cilantro easily at the stores. I think that just having a tray of two or cilantro growing indoors, it's, it's helpful. And I don't really bought any extra equipment because as you know, I already have my setup with LED lights and trays and pots. It was just a matter of getting enough seed and getting some nice potting mix and really, really cool stuff. Another new thing that I tried this year, well, in 2023, because it's December now, was getting some of those seeds that are a little bit pickier to germinate, especially for perennials. I try freezing them. And this is not something original. I did not come up with this idea. I saw another lady showing that she put her seeds in the freezer for like one or two days and she just took them outside and she had great results as far as germination rates. Did you try this technique of freezing the seeds at your own place? The reason why I wanted to try this was because I was planning to grow a bunch of lavender seeds. Now, if you heard or if you have grown lavender seeds, you know that they can be tricky to get to germinate and they are kind of slow to get going indoors. So I wanted to try for those. And if I really would have thought about it, I would have purchased the seeds like a couple of months earlier. I would have left them in the freezer and in the fridge back and forth. But I didn't have that time to just, you know, put them in the fridge for six to 12 weeks. So what I did, I basically grabbed the seeds just like they came out of the packet. I put them in a wet paper towel, inside a Ziploc bag and they went in the freezer for a whole day, 24 hours. After that, I took them outside just like they were in the Ziploc bag and they were under my LED lights in a warm room. It was basically to signal to the seeds that it was time to wake up and to germinate. I had great results and I did the same thing with yarrow and coneflowers. Although my coneflowers didn't do that great, I really think that putting them in the freezer for 24 hours really, really helped. And I mentioned in that video when I did the whole recap of, of that technique, that in the future, especially for those lavender seeds, if I wanted to grow them again, that I was going to do a whole week putting them in the freezer and in the fridge back and forth to kind of mimic a real winter. The winter doesn't just stay frozen outside, it just kind of goes back and forth between temperatures and that's what I wanted the seeds to do. So regardless, I had great, great results with doing that little technique. One of the many things that I did this year in my garden in 2023 was adding a bunch of corten steel planters, especially for growing vegetables. Very early in the spring, I grabbed a bunch of 26 inches 
tall, well, 26 inch square planters that they went alongside of my garage. And then I also grab a couple of different sizes that went in front of the garage. So I pretty much went around the garage on the east, south of the building. And, and at the time, I also added a trellis that I grabbed from Gardeners. And my goodness, that trellis fit perfectly. And even though there is another piece to that trellis that make it really, really tall, I only use one of the pieces that came with it because I didn't have the height to add to that. But by adding that trellis to that front of the garage, it just made it, it made the area, that little corner, a lot more nice to look at it. And I was playing with the idea of just letting that be and planting some sort of annual vine. I am glad that I didn't because I found these gorgeous, gorgeous rose, David Aston Rose, Bathsheba, Bathsheba. Bathsheba, not Baptitia, Bathsheba. And my goodness, I I fell in love with that rose. I found that plant locally. It was already in a one gallon plant. I put it there and it just took off. It is right now bypassing the height of that trellis and I still have to give it a trim, but I'll probably do that early in the spring. I'm not really sure just quite yet. But all of those core tin steel beds that I put around the garage, I grabbed the nicest raised bed mixed soil that I could find locally and I filled them up. I did add a bunch of dead material, organic dead material like leaves, uh, stuff that I trimmed from my perennials, all of that good stuff. And that really helped, although I still use like three, four yards of soil to fill in those containers. I mean, it took a lot of, a lot of soil but I planted most of my dahlias in that area and I plant a bunch of other vegetables, peppers, tomatoes, some other flowers, and they did amazing. Having those permanently there, I think that just adds a nice look to the whole area overall. Another thing new that I did this year was starting dahlias from seed. Normally I just get the tubers and I start them that way indoors a few weeks before to give them a, a little bit of a head start. But this year I use seeds that I purchased from Florette and then I saved from my the garden last year. I wasn't really sure if the seeds from the dahlias that I saved were going to be viable, but they surprised me. They really did amazing. Now, I wish that I would have tagged the seedlings that I grew from the seeds from Florette and the ones that I save for myself, but I just mix them all. But I got some really, really nice mixes and I am saving those tubers from the ones that I started from seed and hopefully I'll get some of the same blooms that I got the first year. We'll see, fingers crossed. One of the things, one of the many things that didn't do that well in my garden was winter sowing. Did your winter sowing do okay this year? I showed you early in the spring how I did uh, three tops and I put a hundred and some containers inside, two and a half inch containers, and I had a lot of seeds. Thankfully, I do not rely on those seeds that I winter sow to put in my garden. Those were sort of a backup and I always do this. Even though I am very new to winter sowing, I feel like I am not quite there yet. I can't just rely on mother nature to do okay, to do enough to get those seeds going. And I did not have great results, you guys. I show you that in another video where I just, there was nothing growing there. One of the main reasons why I blame the failure on the winter sowing was that we didn't really had great cold temperatures by the time that I put those containers outside. It was really dry. It was kind of warmish, even though it was supposed to be like in really cold temperatures. And, and the seeds really didn't go through that period of cold. It was just, too warm and too dry for them to do anything. Even though I was there a few times just watering them, uh, trying to make sure that they were nice and, and moist, they just didn't work out. Installing drip irrigation in my raised beds and in most of my garden was really one of those things that you just have to do because it will save you tons of time in the long run. While I love watering by hand, I, I really enjoy that time that I just get to, to hang out there watering my plants. It really takes a lot of time, especially if you have containers, that you have things in the ground where they need just a little bit extra time, some more than the others. And by having that drip irrigation set up in different zones, it was a huge, huge deal for me. And I really wish that I would have done that at least a couple of years ago. 
When I install all of that irrigation in the garden, I also set up a couple of Wi-Fi timers for each zone so that I could easily just control it from my phone whenever I needed to water things. And this was really the first year that I went with everything being on irrigation. Although I didn't really wanna give up full control of when to water and have things being done automatically, I still went in and I set up things when I needed to water, but normally I will go outside and if I knew that I needed to water my raised beds, I will just turn them on for however long I needed them to. And during that time, I will either take a walk around my garden or do some weeding or do something else around my garden. And that way I didn't have to lose any time. I don't know that this will be the year where I give full control of my watering, but, but having everything already on drip and as needed, is it's honestly a time saver for me. Last year in December, right about Christmas time, so December 2022, we had a couple of days here in central Indiana and in a lot of places around it where the temperatures dip really, really low in the minus 15 in some areas. And it's normally not that big of a deal if it happens, you know, for like a morning or for some time during the night, but it was a constantly two or three days of those temperatures. And I lost a lot of my perennials and some of my shrubs. A couple of things literally just died to the ground. And while they came back, they took some time to, to get going and to get healthier again. A couple of those examples were one of my clematis that I have in, uh, in my arbor. And another one was my Caria japonica rose that I absolutely love. I was really afraid for those things not to come back. I was really not, um, I really didn't think that my clematis was going to come back, but that thing just took off from the ground again and it reached all the way to the top of the arbor in the first year. My Caria japonica, while it did grow again from the ground, it's really taken its time and that's fine. Uh, hopefully this year, this winter, we don't have to go through all of those temperatures, who knows. But the things that I lost that I was really, really sad about were my wall, well, they were becoming a wall, of honeysuckles along the west side of the house. And I had all of those three plants growing along the cattle panel that my husband built a few years ago. And the idea was to have a green wall for privacy reasons mainly. They all died. And I thought, okay, maybe I'll just give them some time, see if they start again from the ground. But not one of those three plants, one of those three shrubs made it in. That really was painful for me because I really had this idea and I had already spent about three years growing those, those vines. So nothing that I could have done. I, I really did not think that uh, those perennial shrubs were going to be hurt by the temperatures, but you know, I had no control about it. But I took that opportunity for extra space and I got three more Vachivas of those roses and I got them there. I don't know how they're going to do because I kind of got them late in the season this year. So we'll see if next spring they do well. I am very comfortable they're going to do well, but you never know. Having asparagus growing in my garden was one of those things that I wish that I would have started at least three or four years ago so that I could already be harvesting by now. That was one of the things that I did this year as well. I gave up about half of one of my raised beds to get asparagus going. And the thing about asparagus is that it takes a lot of time by the time that you actually get to harvest. I got mine, I got a bunch of crowns locally and I got those in the ground in the early spring and I'll probably won't have any harvest, any major harvest until, until 2025 or 2026, really. So if you are just starting your garden, if you're starting to get vegetables, do yourself a favor and get a little area where you can just get asparagus going because you're going to thank yourself here in like four or five years. If you have been here long enough, you know that doing some sort of DIY trellis or something for my garden, it's really something that I enjoy to do. And this year I volunteered my husband's help to make some tomato cages, really that were panels that we turned into cages. And they really did great. I tried to get materials to match the arbor that he made last year. And I am, I'm very happy with how they did. Some of you were really sad when I took those down late in the fall. And honestly, they were not supposed to be there permanently uh, because I really kind of want to change the look of those raised beds. 
every year and just having something there permanently like those panels was going to not work for me. So I have those four panels now and I have an idea of where maybe I want them to be, maybe somewhat permanent, but, but that's something that I'm going to have to get my husband involved because I don't really know that I'll, I can do it by myself, but stay tuned somewhat early in the spring so that I can show you that. Now, one of the many successes that I had in my garden this year was growing my tomatoes. And oh, I am so happy that that was the case this year because last year I had a really crappy year with tomatoes. And this year I was really kind of hesitant about growing that many varieties of tomatoes, but thankfully the weather cooperated. Uh, I had great results. I had great harvest. I got a bunch, a bunch of tomatoes. Um, I am trying to figure out, get creative with how I can still get the same amount of tomatoes, but maybe also try other different types of vegetables. If you know, if you have been here for a while, you know that having the extra space or having more space to grow the things that I wanna grow is really a challenge. So if sometimes I wanna grow some other new things, I have to give up the space for some of the things that I'm already growing. So. I don't really wanna stop growing that many tomato plants, which is normally between 36 and 40 tomato plants. I just love tomatoes. And you guys, while I'm talking about having extra space to grow or really complaining about not having any extra space, purchasing those green stacks for my garden really is giving me more opportunities to think about the things that I can grow because those things are amazing. Honestly, I was a little, I was a little worried that like tomatoes and other things weren't really gonna grow that well compared to the, how they do in the raised bed, but do not underestimate their size because those things are very, very convenient, especially if you don't have a place outside or if you just have a little patio or balcony because I am planning to get maybe one more, maybe two more. I am playing with the idea of having just a wall of green stock back there next to my raised beds. I still have to see about the, the space that I have available, but I'm excited about the things that I can grow in those things. My tomatoes, my herbs, my uh, basil, they did really, really well in those containers. And it really pushes me to think about the things that I can grow there instead of having those in my raised beds. And for things that it may need a little bit more room to spread, I can have those going in the raised beds. So if you have been thinking about green stocks, definitely think that you should look into them again. The dahlias that I had growing specifically in the grow bags in front of my honeysuckle diamond trellis area, they they really didn't do that great. And I am I think that the reason why is because the irrigation that I had set up for that flower bed, which is in the ground, was the same zone that I had those uh, grow bags in. And I normally don't water the plants that I have grown in the ground that much, unless we really don't have a lot of rain going for that season. And basically the grow bags got water at the same time. So if I didn't water my plants in the ground, they didn't get water. So I think that by being in the grow bags, having, you know, that having them being just breathable constantly and getting a little too dry probably most of the time really didn't help to their growth potential. And I also really didn't fertilize them enough. And if you grow dahlias, you know that they really love their nutrients. So I blame that. Um, that was an error on my part. But that little area over there in front of the water fountain is it's exciting for me because I can change the look by just growing different annuals there. Last year was the first time that I put that little bench, DIY bench, and I had some elephant ears and some smaller sunflowers that are growing, and these year were dahlias. I did not get the look that I wanted with dahlias, but that was okay. I still got some blooms at the end of the season. I'm thinking the next year I want some sort of medium size annual that is just that does well in the full sun so if you have any tips for what i could put there next year let me know in the comments okay this one was super super fun for me i grew two types of tomatoes a cherry and a beef steak tomato from one plant and i know that sounds crazy because at the time when i was researching this i thought it was a little bit crazy but listen I basically took two plants, two different types of tomatoes that I had started from seed indoors. I used one for the base and I used one for the top. I really didn't have a scientific reason why I chose those two varieties other than the fact that I love both of them and I wanted to see if I could grow them from one plant. 
and I did and I had really really great results you guys I put that one plant with two different vines coming one from the cherries one from the beef steak and I put them in one container in one huge huge planter and I wasn't sure how well how big was going to be growing both of those tomatoes were I knew that they were going to be big if they were growing by themselves but I wasn't really sure how much growth they were going to have from being combined and I mean at the end of the season that trellis was super tiny compared to all of the growth that the vines were doing I got cherries and I got beef steaks from those from that one plant and that was really really fun to do like I mentioned at the beginning when I first put those two together they looked like they were dying there was no hope but I just kept giving them water and they took off they kept on growing just like any other regular tomato plant and that was really really cool for me to try I don't know that I'll do that this year just because of space but if you want to try that, I'm going to leave the links below to how I did that. And I think that, you know, if you have kids and if you want to try that, it will be like a really cool thing to do. Another thing that I did for the first time as well uh, this year in my garden was using pine needles as mulch for my raised beds. And this was just for my raised beds and in some containers like the Gorton cell containers that I had growing alone along the sides of the raised beds. But the reason why I was trying pine needles is one, because I, I really like the look and two, because I did try straw. I did try using it last year and I don't know if I got the wrong kind of straw. It was labeled for being mulch for the garden, but this straw was going everywhere, like a little bit of a wind and that thing will be like blown all over the place. And I hated that. And I also really didn't want to use uh, some sort of wood mulch. So I look into pine needles. I don't know how I got into it. And I found those at Tractor Supplied and I really like them. I think that a lot of people in the south of the US use pine needles. And I know some people mentioned that when I was showing the pine needles in my videos on how I was using them for mulch, a lot of you mentioned that that is really the mulch that some of you use in the south for your raised beds or for the things in the ground that you have grown in. I really like it, you guys. Not only it looked great when everything else was growing there, but it really kept my soil nice and moist, nice and protected. And also in the fall, when I was doing all of the cleanup, that was really easy for me just to move to the side if I needed to dig something or to plant something. I, I really think that pine needles is going to be the mulch that I use from now on in my raised gardens. And I found that at Tractor Supply in the spring, I think that here in central Indiana is one of those things that I don't know if it was just the year that everybody decided to use pine needles or if that just happens that way, but I had to order online so that it could be shipped to me and it worked out really great for me this year. This year I tried growing Songol tomatoes and my personal favorite, my personal sweet, sweet cherry tomato is Sun Sugar and I swear that that is, that is the sweetest cherry out there. If you're looking for one, try Sun Sugar for sure. Some of you mentioned, if you like Sun Sugar, you definitely gotta try Sun Goals, and I did, and I wasn't impressed. And I'm probably hurting somebody's feelings right now, but honestly, I compare them. I did some blind tests with my husband, with my kids, by myself. I still think that Sun Sugars are probably the sweetest in my own personal opinion. And along those lines of trying things that weren't that great, uh, snail vine was also the case. I took the time, the money, because those seeds were not cheap, to grow snail vines from seed. And the plants did great, they took some time. If you're growing them from seed for the first time, no, they take a little bit of time to get growing indoors. And I put them outside and and they grew fine. They took forever to bloom. They really bloom way later in the season. They did smell great, in my opinion. Everybody talks about the fragrance of snail vine blooms and they were great. Um, however, the location where I put them, the vines were really tall, really high, that if I really wanted to get that experience, I would have to get on the ladder and get next to those blooms. So that was an error of my part, of course. I think that if you have a, a small fence, if you have it growing along that fence, it will be better. But I don't think that I'm going to try them again. It's one of those things that I tried it, I did well with it, I'm not impressed. This is also my first year trying, and I say trying because I don't even know if they're already dead. 
uh, I am trying to overwinter jalapeno plants. So I went through the trouble of digging up the plants, cutting up some of the branches, cleaning up the roots, adding fresh potting mix to bring indoors, and I am trying to keep them alive. I don't know if I am succeeding. Let me show you. I posted on Instagram that I don't know if I am watering plants that are dormant or if I am just watering sticks because I don't know. You tell me. I mean, I scratch a little bit of the, I scratch a little bit of the, the branch, uh, just very, very minimal and there is green in it. So I think we are okay. Um, time will tell. I don't know. Also, the ginger that I started indoors, that I show you how I started indoors and I planted outside, it didn't do that well when it was time to harvest. And I should have known better. The first year that I tried growing ginger outside in my, in my garden, I put it in a planter. It was big, it was huge, and I watered it here and there. I had great results the first year doing that. And I think the biggest thing with ginger was that I had extra space for it. The second year that I tried it, I decided to just put it in a smaller raised bed. I show you where I planted it this year and it did okay. I had some harvest, but not as big as the year before. And I think it was because of the lack of space. So I am going back to doing the thing that I did when I had great success. And I'm just going to keep it that way because I love ginger and I love that I could grow it here. If I gave it the right circumstances for it. I think that the weather was great the first year. The weather was also great this following year. And I know some of you are wondering, you're in a cold climate, how can you grow ginger? Really ginger needs a long time to get to mature. So you really have to start it three to four months, depending on your son or depending where you live uh, ahead of time. So that by the time that it gets outside where you wanna grow it, it it's already a grown plant. So. If you wanna know more about how I did that the first year and when I planted and all of that, I am going to leave a link for a free PDF that you can just keep and download. So uh, if you wanna do that, if you wanna get a little bit more details on that, I'm just going to leave that in the description. I don't know why I didn't think about drying flowers sooner in the past years, but this year I decided I am going to dry a bunch of the flowers that I get from my garden and I don't know what I'm going to do but at the end of the year, I'm going to do something, some sort of DIY with them. And you guys, I made that, that head over there. I don't think that you can see that, but she came out gorgeous. I did a full video on how I did that. It was done with flowers from my garden, 100%. About 90% of those flowers that I have there were grown just by hanging them indoors, cutting them at their, at their peak and just hanging them indoors. A few weeks later, they were nice and dry. And others, especially the dahlias, were dry using silica gel. And that's a game changer, you guys. If I know a lot of you do uh, bouquets with dry flowers. Some of you have no idea what to make with your dry flowers that you collected throughout the year. I think that that super duo was super easy. It takes a little bit of time. That took me about a couple of hours from painting the, the frame to putting every single flower in there. But I think it really came out really, really nice. And I love looking at it every day. Okay, before this video gets extremely long, I gotta say that the curtain still planters that I added to my garden, they are aging beautifully, you guys. I just... I just love that warm, rustic look of them against everything else right now. And I know they don't look like anything without plants in them right now, but there is something about just adding things that will be a accessory or something to look at during the winter, during the winter months when everything else outside is just pretty much dead. And that's what I love my uh, boxwoods and my evergreens and my planters now because all of that together, they just made the place happier. So for those of you who were wondering how I felt about the rustic look of the planters, I love them, I absolutely love them. And that's why I purchased those plants. I know that you can get, I know that you can get planters that are uh, already black, that, that will not rust, that they will just keep like that. I really was not going for that look. I really just wanted the, the natural rustic look of the planters. So just an update on that. 
that is it for this video you guys this is probably the last video that i will post for 2023 <gasps> we made it we're here i don't know how this year just went by so fast super excited about all of the garden things that are happening for 2024 I already started a few seeds. I am going to be starting a bunch. January 1st, I am starting a bunch of violas and eucalyptus because you never know. If you celebrate the holidays, I hope that you have a great time. Thank you for being here. Thank you for an amazing 2023. I know that our gardens are going to be amazing for next year. And until the next time, you guys.